This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero safely on your iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys and seed. And by XMR.to. Anonymously exchange your Monero into Bitcoin and seamlessly send Monero to any Bitcoin address. Go to XMR.to or use it right in your Cake Wallet. Cake Wallet and XMR.to are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. This week on Monero Talk. We did things a bit differently. Douglas Tuman is on the other side of the camera and gets interviewed by none other than Adam Meister, aka the Bitcoin Meister. Doug and Adam chat about Doug's run for U.S. Congress, what he stands for, why he thinks Monero is a tool for preserving free speech in the digital age that aligns with the ideals America was founded upon, and how he plans to be true voice for Monero and cryptocurrency on the floor of Congress. Monero Talk starts now. Hello, everyone. This is Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Welcome to the One Bitcoin Show. Today is June the 11th, 2020. Strong hand, long-term thinking. Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. One Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. Personal responsibility is new counterculture offended by selling. Oh my, do we have a special show for you today? I am so pumped. You guys might remember back in November or so, there was a Monero episode and there was like the Monero guy was on and I always talk about the Monero guy. He hosts Monero Talk. Well, there's a real guy behind Monero Talk. The Monero guy is really Douglas Tuman. Doug, welcome to the show. Thanks and- for having me on, Adam. I love you, your show, man. Just when you do when you do the intro, you remind me how much I miss watching your show because I've been so busy. I, I, I stopped tuning into uh, a lot of my normal uh, crypto episodes. I, I, don't worry, I'll catch back up with the Adam Meister show. But uh, just hearing your intro re- reminded me how much I do love your show, man. You, you do a great show. Well, dude, pound that like button for liking my show. Even though we don't agree on cryptocurrency, we can still, you know, respect. We, we, and We overlap on a lot of things. I think yeah, we, we, we do. And this is the wild thing. I, all of a sudden, I hear that the Monero guy, of all people, is running for political office in New York. Now, right. it's, 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 it's kind of funny because I'm, I'm hearing about some guy named Herzog running for political office in New York just because uh, Vitalik is talking about him. But I hadn't heard about the Monero guy. So w- what brought you to run for politics? Because you care a lot about privacy. And when you run for political office, there's no more privacy. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that was kind of like the biggest decision for me. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I think we spoke about this the last time I was on your show. The reason why I'm so passionate about Monero uh, is because I think it is the tool that will allow us to preserve liberty in the digital age. Um, and, you know, that's really where my passion lies. Uh, I'm a big liberty guy. Uh, I'm running on, you know, um, I'll be back by the Nassau County Republican Party. I'm on the Republican ticket actually have a primary coming up uh but really like in terms of ideals and what motivated me to get politically is my deep-seated belief in liberty and you know the foundations that this government was built upon and i do think in in a lot of ways it ties into cryptocurrency uh i don't think a lot of people have tried to make that connection and make that argument politically uh, but that i i really do see those things going hand in hand uh you know i see monero as free speech money And I want to be the guy on the floor of Congress making that argument to make sure crypto and in particular Monero uh, is not regulated out of existence and is allowed to flourish um, so that we can protect our liberty in the digital age. And, you know, like you said, I mean, the fact that there is a little bit of, uh, you know, it was a tough decision. Right. So, I mean, because now I'm sacrificing my own privacy. I'm sacrificing a lot of a lot of the things I do believe in. but, you know, it, it works. I think it's somebody's got to step up and do it. And I, I'm willing to take that role. So that, well, that was the reasoning. 
Monero has quite a reputation. Well, Bitcoin has quite a reputation. People say Bitcoin is for drug dealers and terrorists, et cetera, et cetera. And then Monero, they take it to the next level. Have you gotten any feedback from people when they hear that you're the Monero guy? Uh, yeah, I have. I mean, so as I'm running, you know, I when I go door to door, I'm also a very local, you know, in my non-Monero life, I'm the commissioner of engineering for the town of Hempstead. So uh, most of you probably don't know what that is, but the town of Hempstead is a very, it's a very, it's actually the largest town in America by some measures. Um, it's, you know, it's in Nassau County, which is right outside New York City. So right outside Queens, it's a very large place. Um, and I'm, I'm very well connected with the community on a, on, a, on a personal basis in terms of being the commissioner of engineer. I'm in charge of all the infrastructure for my entire town. So in my non-crypto life, I do have this kind of like personal connection. So when I'm, when I'm going door to door and when I'm talking to people during my camp, I only recently started going door to door with, because of Corona. But, you know, as I'm campaigning online, uh, honestly, crypto really doesn't come up. Right. So I'm talking about more the other things that I believe in. Right. So all, all this like liberty stuff. Right. I mean, that's really kind of what I focus on, uh, you know, the direction that I want the country to be going in. Uh, my slogan is build a brighter future together. I have this whole component of my campaign where uh, I've created a text based polling system and I'm giving all my constituents access to it. And we, we built it out so only people in my district can sign up. So it's kind of a way they can vote issue to issue. And then I'll use that to help determine how I legislate in Congress. But my point being, I don't really go and I don't talk. You know, Monero is not the number one thing I talk about. It's really I don't bring it up until we get to the conversation. You know, some people do talk and they say, hey, how about the fact? What do you think about the fact that, you know, the government just, you know, printed uh, essentially printed three trillion dollars, you know, uh, over the last you know couple of months what do you think about that what do you think about you know the federal reserve and then that's when i start to then talk about things like cryptocurrency i start to talk about monero um so you know it is it's 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 woven into my campaign on a per i don't really talk about it or bring it up to people uh unless it comes up in conversation and then obviously i'm out there talking to the crypto people trying to get them behind me as the candidate uh you know trying to get some you know, honestly, trying to get some funding for them, right, to, to, to help make this a reality. I have a really good chance at actually, this isn't like, I'm not like a, a crypto guy who's just deciding to run for Congress on a lark. My, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a political, you know, I never ran for office, but, you know, I'm a government official by day. I'm the commissioner of engineering. I kind of, I'm very uh, close with the, the, with the local Republican Party. So I'm that first. So I do have a shot at actually winning this thing. And the crypto is just kind of, uh, you know, icing on the cake. And it's a big part of what I believe in. And I tie it into my messaging. All right. Uh, can people, is it legal to donate Monero to a campaign? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you could donate Monero. You could donate, you know, any cryptocurrency. Um, you know, I make that a big part of my, you know, I put that out there all over the place. You know, if you want to donate Monero, you just have to, it's a federal campaign. So people have to and this is you know kind of antithetical to the to the monero way they have to reveal their identity okay. right so if they're donating anything over essentially fifty dollars they have to you know tell me you know their name their employer their occupation so th there's that element uh but th you know there's reasons why those rules exist i don't necessarily disagree with it you know i've been thinking about it i'd be interested to hear your opinion on that actually um you know, I do, like I said, you know, I'm all for free speech money. I think it's important. Money is power, right? Money is, is, it is speech at the end of the day. So you could use your money to influence, right? It is, you know, there's a few, you know, you could, you can vote in elections and you could also then use your money to, to help steer elections. Uh, now, whether or not, you know, uh, you know, you should have to reveal your identity. I, I do understand the reasoning as to why you would, you would want that, right? So we don't want, you know, outsiders, people outside of this country, essentially influencing our internal uh, elections. But I'm also a big believer in the fact that we don't want people getting censored, right? So somebody might want to participate in an election and, and have some political idea, but not want to reveal themselves. So for me, it is a tough issue. That wh What is your take on that? Actually? Oh, the campaign finance bureaucracy is so big. It is such a waste. I think it should be, there shouldn't be limits. I don't think there should be limits at all. And I, I think it, it, it can come from private sources. I, I, I wouldn't, 
I'm not worried about foreign influence or, or anything like that. I, I think it's it's a it's a huge bureaucracy. It's a, it it only it helps the established people maintain their power. All of these rules around campaign finance. I mean, imagine there, there could be some newcomer out there that a millionaire loves, and uh, he could only give him six thousand dollars or something like that. And, I, I don't know. I, I, and it just yeah. the, in, the entrenched people are, are that, that gives them an advantage right there. Yeah, it makes it very hard. You know, so, you know, I'm connected to my local Republican Party. But, you know, it, it, it is unless you really know the ropes or you're you know, you're already established. It is hard. So like because the max donation is twenty eight hundred from an, in, an individual, you know, the incumbent that I'm going up against, you know, she ha- she could she could round up millions of dollars. No problem. And you really need to know how to like work with the loopholes, work how to like get around that. Uh, you know, somebody like me, I literally have to just go person to person and hope to try to get a few max donations. So it does it does kind of give uh, people like that, uh, you know, people like me an unfair, uh, you know, makes it unfair and others have an unfair advantage. Now, when you you grew up on Long Island. Yeah, born and raised on Long Island. Do you uh, have any memories of the Islanders winning the Stanley Cup? Um, I was never a big hockey guy, um, but, but I mean, but do you remember the, yeah. the happy feelings I, that people yes, had yes. around you? I remember the Islanders in their heyday. I used to go, I used to go, I, I used to go to the games, you know, I used to have friends that would, that were into it, into it and they had tickets and I, I would go to, I would go to Islanders games. Um, so, yes, so, yes. some would call it the Nassau mausoleum, not the Nassau Coliseum, <laughs> uh, from what I heard from the people that I knew from, uh, up there. Okay. I just wanted to give everybody a little bit of a flavor, the New York flavor. This guy is real. <laughs> and, uh, Hey, if you've got questions, uh, ask them right now in the, uh, in the live chat, people, you, you can ask a uh, politically, uh, cryptocurrency related question. So have you heard about this guy, Jonathan Herzog, that's, uh, running what does he run? He's running for Congress in the tenth district, in the tenth oh. of the, New York's tenth. And does he have an actual uh, shot? Uh, do you know what he, what he's running as? He's running as a libertarian. Or? No, he's running as a Democrat. He's as running a, as a Democrat. Okay. As, uh, against the there's a huge Democratic. Uh, he has no shot because it's a big uh, Democrat in, incumbent there. So you're running against a Democrat. Well, first of all, when is the primary? When's the primary? So primary is June 23rd. Uh, I have a very good shot at winning. I'd like. I don't, I don't, the only reason I don't want to say like, I'm going to win. Cause I, that's, I, I personally, I, I never, uh, I always fight to, to win and I never assume I'm going to win anything until, until the battle's over, but I have a very good shot at winning the primary. I have the entire party behind me. So primary, I should knock on wood should definitely be able to win handedly. Uh, but then, but then I'm up against Kathleen Rice, who is the incumbent. Um, you know, she's, she typically wins by 60%. Uh, but I think this year, I think with everything that's going on and my messaging, which is, you know, building a brighter future together, bringing people together, really fo- a big part of what my message is, is kind of going back to basics, focusing on this idea of, you know, the American dream, uh, focusing on the fact, you know, this this idea. When I knock on doors and I talk to people, I'm like, hey, what do you what is it that you want? What is it that you want your community to look like? You're, you know, what what is it that you want America to be? And it's like, you know, I just want I want to feel safe. I want to be able to, you know, buy a home. I want to be able to go out into society, into an open and free society where I can act as an individual. You know, I want to have equal opportunity to strive to succeed. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what people want. And that's just true ideals of what this country was founded upon. So I'm really trying to tap into that message. And that message translates beyond the Republican Party, you know, and people people hear that message no matter what side of the political spectrum they're on. Because one on one, when you're talking to them, they're like, yeah, that's what I want. And then, you know, I don't know what your take was on the lockdown and everything. Oh. I was. I was a big proponent on reopening things swiftly. I don't know where where you stood on that. Oh man, I thought the lockdown was horrifying. And and we get back to work immediately. Very good to hear on your part. Yeah, so I came out on that very early when it was controversial, you know, just, you know, probably for the same reasons you did. And, you know, I went to these rallies where it was very controversial showing up as a, you know, somebody's running for political office for Congress and I show up, you know, and these rallies, this was like, you know, a while ago now. And everybody's like, how could you do that? You're endangering people's lives. You don't care about, you know, you don't care about safety. I'm like, well, you know, I care about, you know, the economy. I care about all these small business owners that, you know, aren't allowed to practice their own common sense and decide whether or not they want to open their business. You know, when has America ever functioned like this, where we take away the, the ability of, of, of 
individuals in society to practice common sense and make their own decisions as to what they want to do. And then here in New York, uh, Governor Cuomo, I don't know if you're familiar with him, uh, but, you know, oh, yeah. he's, he's been out there every day acting like he's the emperor, te- you know, like he's looking out for everybody's best interests. Meanwhile, you know, one of the things he did, this is very controversial. He there was a time where he, he was sending Corona patients were getting sent back into nursing homes. Yes. Uh, because, yeah. And it was completely backwards. You know, meanwhile, he's telling you, oh, safety, safety, safety. Meanwhile, there's healthy young people that are locked in their homes. They can't go and work. There's small businesses done. So I really tapped into that message. And I think, you know, that message is translating. And I think that's why, you know, in November, as I continue to pound on that, you know, look, look what the Democrats did. Look what Kathleen Rice was doing. And look what I stand for. I think I can can start to eat into her her people and to the people that are uh there's a lot of people in my district that are registered blanks that are unassociated with either party and i think i can really get in touch with them with that message all right pound that like button everyone you're the first the political candidate i've ever had on the show before uh right. but but i do you are so you're an innovator in that way but i want to point out to everyone to, to give to give this guy's history he got me into jitsi back in November. All right. And so now everyone, we, everyone got locked down and started using zoom and saw the privacy issues with zoom. Meanwhile, back in November, I've been on Jitsi since November. So there are a lot of people who like, what's this Jitsi thing? And now they know about it because zoom was so not so private. So I got to give you credit. You, You do know tech, you do know privacy. Uh, do you, from talking to the, the real voters, do they care about, about privacy at all? Um, you know, they, they do. They do. Everybody's starting to understand it, you know, especially now with the lockdown, right? With everybody, everybody's on the internet, was on the internet more than ever, right? Uh, and then, like you said, things with like the Zoom, uh, you know, with their you know, realizing that their kids, their young children that are normally in school are now on Zoom, you know, and they're starting to realize, like, wait a minute, you know, like who controls that? Who's, the, you know, people are, I think, are starting to wake up to that, you know, um, people are starting to wake up like that. They're starting to realize uh, in terms of, you know, Monero and private money. Um, I don't know if that's something that translates and people are understanding. But like I said, when they when they see that the government's printing up all this money, that that gets their attention. You know, that certainly wakes them up to crypto, Um, you know, and I should say, you know, what we saw, you know, we've seen people support Bitcoin. Right. We've seen that happen now. We've seen political figures uh, talk in Congress positively about Bitcoin. Um, But what we haven't seen, you know, whenever Bitcoin is discussed on the floor of of Congress, uh, you know, when they have these hearings and they talk about it, there's that question that always essentially ends up coming up. And it is, hey, what if this what if this, you know, Bitcoin thing was used to fund terrorism or, you know, what if it's, you know, people are using it on the dark web to buy drugs. And then the the always the canned answer, the response is, well, don't worry about it senator or, or congressman uh bitcoin is actually uh, a traceable ledger where all where you can see all transactions and uh that becomes the argument as to why it's okay to have bitcoin and that oh that always uh, annoyed me on a very deep level because that shouldn't be the argument uh it should be well there's this you know we even have things like monero where you could actually you know where we don't have control we don't have you but that's okay right because it's like cash, and we're okay with that in society with cash, right? And why are we okay with that? We're okay with that because money is speech. People should be able to freely use their money as their wish, as they wish. And if it's used for nefarious purposes, doesn't mean it should it should make the use uh, obsolete for other purposes. Just like the internet itself, I'm, I'm sure you've had these conversations. It's many, many times on this show, uh, but nobody's really making that message uh, on, con- you know, on the floor of Congress. Nobody's really arguing that publicly. They all kind of like step back. But I think that's the message to be made. You know, it's free speech money. We have the Constitution. You know, I think ultimately, if you wanted to, sit, you know, actually start to really if you somebody wanted to seriously consider regulating something like Monero or outlawing Monero, I think you'd really come up against the Constitution and cases that have gone before the Supreme Court. And you'd realize uh, Monero is constitutional and uh, it's something that, 
you know, is good for the country. It's going to create more fluid communication. It's going to create a more fluid economy where people can, you know, freely just just interact in commerce. I, I want to ask you about being on the floor of Congress. Uh, you saw the Mark Zuckerberg Facebook hearings. Uh, some people were really virtue signaling and, and attacking him. Uh, what, what would you ask him? How would you treat uh, Mark Zuckerberg? And what's your take on Facebook and Libra? Oh, my take on well, I think you know, I think uh, it's 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 kind of uh, doesn't matter, you know, because Bitcoin and things like Monero exist, right? So my take on Libra is that it's just a it's just a poor attempt at you know trying to trying to uh, you know make money or or grab power off of off of this crypto. Uh, revolution that that already happened with without Zuckerberg, um, you know, and you know that's it, it. It looks like it's a failed attempt already. I don't I don't see anything happening with that. It, it, it's 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 slowly moving on. I mean, the bigger question is: Would you just let? Would you let him have it if you were in charge? Would you just say, "Yeah, you can have your own cryptocurrency, Mark"? Sure. Yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> and, and that you know, I, and I think you know, people would then have the freedom to then choose other cryptos, which they already have. You see, just, you, you say it's so, slowly you wake say up. It, Go ahead. You say it's so nonchalantly. Of course, of course, all the other politicians want a piece of it. They want to regulate it. They want to stop it. You just said, of course, I, I agree with you, hundred percent. Yeah. He, you, why do they have to have a darn hearing about the darn thing? It, it's right. it's. Yeah, no, I mean, I see, I see that as a bridge to, you know, to the true cryptos, to to Bitcoin and Monero, right? So as as people start to use that, uh, if they were to, they would realize, like, wait a minute, why why am I using this, you know, uh, Zuckerberg coin, uh, Zuckbucks, when I could be using, you know, the 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 Monero or Bitcoin version of it? I think that you know you're going to need things like that to happen to create these on ramps, uh, you know, into into true cryptos. Now, I, I am not a guy who likes to spend a lot of time on politics, so I don't encourage people to do what, what you're doing and everything. But at, at some point, there's going to have to the people in Congress are going to have to learn what this really is about. And so uh, you just running it, it's it's good marketing uh, for cryptocurrency, for Bitcoin, for Monero, for whatever. And that may, and you'll inspire other crypto candidates and maybe you know, shift the shift things. So some of these incumbents become more of crypto candidates. Uh, it, you, you're, you're doing a, you're doing a good, a good deed here. I, I it just, it, it's so, so darn time consuming. Uh, it's going to take up and you're running against an incumbent, but if people want to help out again, your, your, your page is linked to below. You accept all sorts of cryptocurrencies on it. I mean, what, is there, is there a Bitcoin address there? What's it look like if I wanted to give you a cryptocurrency? So the way we had, you know, we tried to keep it simple. So it's douglastuman.com is the website. Yes. Um, but yeah, at the donation, we made it very simple. So like, if you wanted to donate in crypto, we just ask you essentially to fill out a form saying that you want to donate into crypto. And then we'll just send you the, you know, we'll send you the address because we got to get your information first. Okay. Because, because okay. it is a federal election. So you basically say, you know, I'm Adam Meister, whatever, whatever you hit submit. And then we would send you, if you want to donate in Bitcoin, we'd send you a Bitcoin address to donate to so that we know this Bitcoin is coming from Adam Meister. Okay. Uh, that, that, with Monero and, and all others. Okay. I, I, I see how that works. Now that's uh, because there was somebody in the chat who wanted to give you Bcash. So he says, so yes. you, but he, it's linked to below, by the way, the Douglas's freaking site where you can read all his opinions and everything it, it's and his twitter it's linked to but go to the site see if you want to give him the b cash if you were serious dude in in the comment section he'll he'll take that b cash yeah, and it'll, it'll, go, to uh, donation, go to the donation section you'll see a form just fill it out and uh we'll, we'll send you a b cash uh address to send to him no no worries yeah so what what do you think about all the uh <laughs> since since the end of the month since the end of may there have been uh disturbances across the United States. Uh, what, what's your take on this? Uh, I, I'm just, I'm just upset about how divided the country is. And, you know, at, at the end of the day, I feel like a lot of people are just pawns in the, in this, ga this game that's taking place here where the country is essentially being divided. Um, and it's for political reasons. Uh, you know, the media is a big part of what's, what's happening here. I think, you know, the pro what happened, obviously the George, George Floyd, 
Uh, I think anybody who watched anybody who's human who watched that video, I think had the same response was, uh, you know, that that guy was just murdered in broad daylight. And uh, it was a horrible thing. And he was murdered by a police officer. And I think that I think the protests totally called for, you know, obviously, you know, big liberty guy, big, you know, uh, you know, First Amendment guy, go out there, protest, practice, you know, practice your first. I do think it was a little uh, hypocritical to see, you know, the Democrats and the liberals that were opposed to people like me out there protesting to reopening the economy. We're that OK with people protesting other things. But that aside, you know, I, I agree. Let's go out there. Go ahead. Go protest. I agree with, you know, the fact that there needs to be change, obviously, because otherwise you wouldn't have people out there, you know, protesting in these numbers. Some, something is wrong. Uh, I don't agree, obviously, with it evolving into into riots uh, and where that's happened. Uh, you know, I, I don't stand for that at all. Uh, I know people in my community don't agree with that. Um, you know, I do think some people, some political figures were kind of looking the other way on that being like, you know, I understand why they're rioting. I, you know, there's no understanding for rioting. I mean, they were ruining people's communities, destroying people's neighborhoods. It's a, it's a horrible thing. So, you know, proponent for the, you know, proponent for people pe peacefully protesting. I don't like the, I, I don't agree with the message that it turned into let's defund the police. I think, you know, to have open and free societies, which like I keep, you know, saying is, you know, a big part of my message, uh, you know, which is what I think people want in America, especially in New York, uh, you, you need you need law and order, you need safety, you know, people need to feel safe, they need to feel like, you know, they can buy a home in a neighborhood, and it's not going to get, you know, it's not going to get robbed, they, you know, they could open up the storefront. And it's going to, you know, you know, a brick isn't going to go flying through the window. Like, that's what you need. Uh, you need in society. We're not at the point in evolution where we're able to say, hey, no, no laws. We're all we're all getting along fine. Uh, so the defunding the police thing, I think uh, I think it's a bit drastic. And, I, you know, I'm certainly opposed to that message. Where, where do you where do you stand on it? Of course, I don't want one to completely defund the police. What I, I would love is every budget gets cut. Let's run the government more efficiently. I say defund. Uh, my, my reply to that, because it, it's such a radical thing to say defund the police, I say defund the, the Board of Education, de, defund the educational department, uh, de, defund the schools, because their, their budgets are also bloated because of unions. And we can, we, the, the, but if the unions ha, were held in check a little bit more, the police budget would go down, the, the educational budget would go down, and there would not be as much abuse in both of these uh, uh, realms because there's plenty of really nasty abuse in, in education also, okay? And uh, we, we, don't, we don't hear about that. And that's to the children. So I, I am for smaller government all around, but like completely having uh chaos on the streets with no more police which is what so these some of these people are just not long-term thinkers they're like well let's just get rid of all the police we'll live in it'll be a perfect word world no that that's that's not how you do things you have a you actually have a long-term plan what what comes after the police what 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 does a smaller uh budget look like for a smaller police force what's uh, uh, what does a less corrupt police force look like i mean these are the, the pe people are again you said it beforehand so much of this is just political grandstanding. People are are jumping on mindless phrases to to rile up people's emotions. And again, for now, this is our second time interview. You're not about riling up people's emotions. You're just uh, stating the facts here. You're you're into no, the numbers. And and I think that's what people want too. And I think people are going to gravitate towards that because they want normalcy. You know, they're they're getting all riled up on social media, but they're beginning to see that they are they are pawns in the game here. You know, it's like. It's like, why, why do you, why are you looking at me? You know, I, it's people that, you know, uh, that normally I'd be smiling at and maybe smiling back at me. It's like now, like we're enemies because we're on different political sides of the spectrum, uh, which is just, it is exactly what certain people want us to be. And at the end of the day, we're, we're, you know, we're more similar than we are different, right? We all want, like I said, we all want the same thing. We want to, in my community, I know, you know, we just, people want to be able to buy a home, have a family, you know start to, you know, have a job, be, maybe be an entrepreneur, be an individual, have equal opportunities. So that really should have nothing to do with, with politics. And, but yet we're, we're more divided than ever before. So I think we need to really, you know, get that message out there of uniting people against 
the people that are trying to divide us essentially and just coming together as citizens and being like enough enough with the absurd politics and people trying you know using us and turning turning people against each other uh it's it's disgusting really I, I think you could tie cryptocurrency into all of this, and I recommend that you try to tie it in all the time to, different, to differentiate yourself, to get into the news somehow, because uh, an incumbent Democrat in New York sounds like uh, people take that for granted. The media will just assume uh, she's going to win and uh, just not you're, – you're, you're going to have to use this as a marketing tool. and. Again, I, I, I encourage you to do it because it'll be good. It'll be good for you. It'll be good for, for Bitcoin. It'll be good for cryptocurrency. So I, I don't know what, what your normal spiel is when you knock on doors. You usually can only bring up like one to three subjects. Do you bring up cryptocurrency at all? Uh, like I said, you know, it's not like when I talk about like, you know, the, the major things I'm talking about. I don't I don't be like, and by the way, cryptocurrency, because a lot of people don't even know it. But yeah. anybody that I do engage in, you know, like I'd say like, you know, maybe 60 percent of them, we end up getting to the topic because I'll be like, do you know, you know, because they'll say something, like I said, about, you know, the printing of the money or, you know, things like that. I'll, or, you know, they'll, they're, they're concerned with that. And then I'll be like, are you are you aware of cryptocurrency? That's usually how how it starts, how the Good. conversation starts. But I don't I don't just go out there and bring on um, Doug Tuman and not, you know. Uh, I believe we should all be using cryptocurrency because, uh, you know, I, I just don't think that's not something that a lot of, uh, you know, normal people that aren't in the crypto world can can relate to. But I think, you know, it's going to be a, a big part of, my, of who I am. So if elected, it would certainly get out there. And during my campaign, you're going to start to see a lot more of it. So once I win the primary, once I'm up against Kathleen Rice, uh, it will become a bigger part of my message. She was on. Um, I think it was the, the a Homeland Security Commission uh, where they 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 did something where, where they went to they started to investigate uh, privacy coins. Actually, they they uh, they they allotted money towards that, uh, you know, and uh, she was a big part of that. She was actually the one spearheading that. Uh, I, I didn't even realize that until I was going to run and I was just researching her. I was like, oh, wow. OK, so I'll be bringing that up uh, because, you know, that's exactly what I don't think we need. You know, I don't think we need a government. Uh, spending money uh, doing research on how to stifle a uh, technology. Uh, I mean, you know, we, you know, the internet, uh, you know, Silicon Valley, we did, we did pretty well with Silicon Valley, right? So d does America, you know, for the interests of America, do, do we want to be meet, uh, missing out on, on the tech boom of crypto? And in a lot of ways, we already are, uh, especially here in New York. I'm sure, you know, the bit license was, you know, it was, it was, it was tragic. I mean, it was, uh, it was, it was revolting to see New York, you know, that at one time was this bastion of, of free commerce. You know, it's the, the birth of Wall Street becomes the place where you can't even you couldn't even talk crypto. You know, uh, the bit license, you had, you, had to, you had to be, you know, Goldman Sachs or you no know, Goldman Sachs to may, maybe get your, you know, maybe get your foot in the door there with, with the, uh, you know, running a crypto business in New York. I mean. That is not what we need in, in this in this state, and that's certainly not what we need in this country. And I think uh, you know once you get the you really get the message out there, you compare it to the internet. You know, you do things like that. You compare the technology to you know. There's obviously a lot of good and bad that comes with the you know. Andreas Antonopoulos always talked about that very eloquently. You know, comparing it to the internet, um, the fact that you know you know a lot you know it could be used for good and bad, right? But over the overwhelming use is is for good right it's in i don't think anybody would argue that the internet hasn't improved the world and that's going to be the same argument that needs to be made with crypto i, I love what you, you said that that woman was on a committee uh that that's that basically is there to stifle innovation and uh th that alone that what, what you just what you said about that was great i mean that take a sound take that as a sound clef after out of there and it will get so many uh cryptocurrency people interested in in your campaign uh because unfortunately i do know from being around politics a little while that it is so much of this is about funding so he's gonna need funding he's gonna need attention from the crypto we're gonna have to call you the crypto candidate man step into that position to be the crypto candidate and you'll get articles in coindesk about you hopefully this is the first of many much coverage in the cryptocurrency space um and you should, you know, to 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 get on some of these shows, just show them that clip. What you just said about your what what your opponent is all about. 
Your, your opponent is about stifling technology, stifling this, this industry, which is part of the golden age of the 2020s. Do we want a guy who is wants Americans to be free to be part of the golden age of the 2020s? Or do we want uh, someone that's just going to uh, try to put all sorts of obstacles in, in everyone's ways? Uh, so I think, I think that's what it boils down to. We're here at, at the end. I, is there anything else you, you wanted to add? Anything that, that, that wasn't said? Any, any points uh, to, to tell the crowd? No, I mean, thank, thanks for having me on, you know, thanks for, you know, uh, asking me all the great questions. And yeah, I, I would say, you know, uh, I haven't really pitched to the Monero, you know, Monero community or the crypto community at large in any big way to to raise funds. But yeah, now would be the time, you know, it, it would certainly help. Uh, and, you know, it's not like I said, I, I have a real shot at this. Well, certainly uh, I'm going to win the primary, you know, I hope, you know, but I really I really think we have a great shot at that. And then, uh, you know, Kathleen Rice, I think we'll, we'll give her a run for her money. And, uh, you know, if I have the crypto community behind me and actually supporting me, uh, it is possible, you know, and this is a, re you know, it's a congressional seat. This isn't, you know, this isn't a minor. This is a big deal. And it's uh, out of New York. You know, New York's a powerful place. Uh, Nassau County writes, you know, this isn't, you know, this is nothing wrong with upstate New York, but this is an upstate New York. This is Nassau County right outside of New York City, which I think is the greatest city in the world, despite the bit license, um, you know, so it, it's it's a powerful seat. And, you know, we, we get some, you know, we get me in there and, you know, I'll be, your, you know, your Monero candidate, your crypto candidate. And uh, I think it's great, great for the crypto community if you could pull it off. All right. This might be the start of something really big. And hopefully you'll inspire a lot of other people out there uh, to openly talk about this stuff and uh, to oppose all sorts of obstacles that these nonsense politicians try to put in our way. Uh, to They're trying to slow down the golden age of the 2020s. You're trying to rev it right up. All right, Doug Tooman, everybody, check him out. He is linked to below. You might know him as the Monero Talk Guy. Uh, here, I'll, here, I'll show my shirt here. It's my, my Tooman shirt. It's 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 bigger. It's 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 big stuff here, dude. All right, <laughs> this 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 will go down in history. This uh this this video. Who knows? It might be the start of something huge. I'm Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister. This Rob Meister. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like this video, pound that like button. We'll be back for at this week in Bitcoin on Friday, 10 a.m. East Coast time. Thanks a lot again, Doug. See everyone later. Bye bye. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.